So it's quite interesting, particularly with the resin kit. This is almost translucent. Uh, you can't really see the imperfections with the naked eye that easily. So the idea then is you spray a very thin coat of your primer um, and that will bring out various imperfections. So I think this is the second time I've had to spray the primer. So it's looking particularly good. Um, but then obviously I can still see a few imperfections. You know, if I just look at his face over there, uh, you can see like a little a scratch in there, which I might, or actually I probably will fill up. Uh, and other tiny little things, like you can see little uh, pockets uh, that I didn't actually notice before, so I'll have to come in again with the milliput. Um, but for the most part, very nice finish. Uh, you can obviously see where I applied all the milliputs in the first place, so you can see all over there. Um, you know, fairly thick layers of milliput where I've had to fill up, but it's given me a very nice smooth finish. This probably took about three attempts in terms of obviously applying a very thin layer of um, base coat uncovers a few more scratches and nicks. You need to sand that down a little bit and apply more milliputs and just keep going. I would say what you really want to do, and I noticed this uh, the first time I was doing the first coat, uh, is you want to apply a very, very thin layer of base coat. Uh, the reason for this is when you sand it, is you obviously you don't want the paint peeling off. And I found if I had a coat of paint that was a little bit too thick, uh, that would just peel straight away. Um, also, in terms of sanding, what I found very helpful is just to take a, you know, a used piece of smooth sandpaper. So for example, just from the different layers of sanding, I had a few bits of paint where there was a slightly, uh, like a very fine line where you could see the underlying layer. Um, so what you want to do is ever so slightly sand, in, you know, don't fold it into a ball and because that just actually makes the sandpaper too hard. Uh, I also found that you really want the paint to cure before you actually do any sanding. Um, again, even just using a hairdryer to accelerate the drying process, I found that it didn't actually dry it enough or cure it so that it was hard enough for sanding. Um, so, you know, probably could go even more perfect, but seeing that, you know, when it's on display, um, you know, if you're looking at it from a distance, you're definitely not going to see any of the uh, imperfections. Um, especially once you've painted the uh, the skin tone and, and applied any sort of texturing. So that'll be the next step. So now that I've done everything with mini parts, um, I will be moving on and painting the skin tones. Rather than showing all the steps that I'm doing and giving a tutorial, I mean there's plenty of information out there on the web. Um, just give you a quick update of where I am. So I've done my first coat or first couple of coats of skin tone. So there's my palette over there, and what that is is a combination of white, uh, raw sienna and burnt sienna, and I'm using Liquitax, which is the same brand as I'm using for my airbrush medium. Um, that's this guy over here. So there's the Liquitax airbrush medium and soft body paints. So the soft body paints are suitable for airbrushes as well, although to be honest I am finding that it clogs a lot more quickly than my Vallejo Model Air. So slight difference there. Uh, so I've painted two coats of a relatively dark skin tone. So the idea here is that I will then do some highlights afterwards. So it's looking quite shiny now. I did find that the uh, soft body paints have a very slight satin finish. Uh, and then I actually then sealed it in with perma seal. So I know normally uh, a lot of people will use Krylon uh, matte finish. Um, very expensive in the UK, so I was able to get this from a local art store. Uh, what was particularly interesting about this one is that it's non-yellowing. Uh, it's also waterproofing, so when I actually do do my inks and things like that afterwards, I'll be able to wipe them off if necessary. Um, and obviously UV protective, uh, and that's why it's non-yellowing. Uh, so that'll keep the skin looking good for a long time, I hope. There's an update on the next part. Uh, of the phase. I've taken you know, a few different primary colors, got red, blue, uh, white and yellow and using a flat brush I've just speckled it all over the show. Um, so looking quite heavy. I'm not sure if I've done it too much. As I said this is the first time that I'm doing this. I'm uh, just following guidelines from another tutorial. 
Um, so the idea here is then I will next hit it again with another coat of skin tone just to cover those up. Um, so hopefully I haven't gone too heavy. I've watered these down significantly. I mean these were my model air colors and I actually then used water, about 80% water to uh, water those down. So this is you know, somewhat translucent. Uh, and we'll see how this turns out after I've hit it with another skin tone layer. I've now hit it a couple more times with uh, the same skin tone just to knock back the speckles. I mean here you can see the speckles. This is what actually the whole body or whole face was covered with. Um, and now you should be able to see that that's been pulled back quite a lot. In fact, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. Uh, and then I also took the same flesh tone, added a bit of white, and I just did a few highlights. So just on the protruding parts like on the neck and the nose and, you know, just various bits and pieces. I've done the hair now, as well as the eyebrows. Um, done it essentially a dark grey, uh, and then filled in some of the gaps with uh, pitch black. So just in the deeper uh, sections of the hair. Uh, and then for highlights, I actually used grey as well as brown. Uh, just looking at people's black, you know, people with black hair. Um, you just see all sorts of colours when they're standing in the sun. So I just try to add a little bit of variety. Uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. So you can see a slight amount of colour variation in there, just so that it doesn't look stark and pitch black. Uh, same with the eyebrows. Uh, and then the skin now, I actually ended up to hitting it again with skin tone. So I'm not sure if you can pick it up with the camera. Uh, but there are just those tiny little speckles, just ever so slightly visible. You kind of have to look for them. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on the cheek here. So you might be able to see them there. And uh, this kind of just gives it a slight variation so it doesn't look too plain. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to hit this again with uh, the sealant. Uh, and then I'll do a little bit of makeup work um, with some chalk pastels. All right, I've actually gone right through to the end now. I've done the eyes um, as well as the flat shading. So the eyes turned out to be pretty tricky. Um, hopefully I can capture them on camera. Um, blue eyes, so just, you know, the, there are various tutorials out there where you know, I did first a dark gray circle or a solid circle, then filled that in with blue, did a pupil, and then also that white specular highlight. I also did an eyelashes, just also in dark gray, just on the top so it doesn't look like makeup and uh, you know pretty happy with the results I then also then you know sprayed it just with the typical perma seal because that gives it a slightly gloss finish I decided not to use epoxy or anything like that I know some people use like a, a two-part epoxy that's clear to give it a nice uh, wet shiny look on the eyes um, or I could have used my matte va uh, sorry the gloss varnish from Vallejo um, but I know this stuff can yellow, and um, I'm also not too sure what impact it might have had on the colour, so I decided not to do that. Um, and then, you know, I did the lips as well, just, uh, you know, the same skin tone that I used with a slight amount of, of, of red in there, and also just did very slight striations of different uh, levels of colour or colour intensity, so from light red to dark red, and also just skin tone just to... Um, have his lips not look like lipstick and uh, I then actually found that by you know this perma seal which is there designed to increase uh, color tensity intensity or density I found that when I actually then put on a proper matte finish it actually went quite um, a bit pale uh, I know a lot of people complain about matte varnishes and that they uh, can make something look chalky. I've never really had that problem before, but I guess that's because I generally have only used the matte varnish um, for Gundam models or something to that effect where it hasn't been so noticeable. Uh, so what I ended up doing is taking a gloss coat, um, adding 20% matte varnish to that, and just giving it a very gentle spritzer because I wanted to actually have a little bit of a sheen on there, so a satin finish. Um, our skin does reflect light or does, is slightly reflective, so I didn't want something super dull. Uh, but there's the final product. I'm not sure how well the color will be reproduced here. Um, I also did a little bit of shading 
you know, just let's say, let's see if that comes through. Uh, you know, people with black hair or black beards, even when they shave, they'll have, you know, a little bit of a shadow left behind with obviously a little bit of stubble. Um, so a little, a little bit of that along the sides and also on the top lip. Add a little bit of red to the cheeks and also just, you know, I was using uh, chalk pastels in the UK. Can't seem to find them at the moment. Uh, but anyway, I use chalk pastels. Uh, these are the earth colors, I found them. Uh, earth colors. Uh, so I ended up using a, you know, a, a dark brown uh, just to do some shading. I decided not to do the shading with the airbrush, as I was saying, and uh, I'm very happy with the results. And uh, you know, the the hair left glossy. Obviously, I wanted to have the hair looking healthy and shiny. Uh, the rest of the skin is obviously a satin finish. I mean, looking at it through the camera, it does maybe look a little bit too glossy on the hair, so I might knock that down a bit. But uh, for the most part, you know, very happy with the results, and. Uh, you know, next up will be the rest of the body. I probably won't do a video of what I do for the body, but I will obviously show the final piece when I have done the torso and the legs and the cape. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was a, a long series of how I customized the Superman Adopted Son bust uh, or head. And uh, I think I will probably still do a paint up of the original bust and do a comparison of the two.